Well, you were right to be afraid. No, but not of him. You see, the critic's ass is actually the gateway to hell. What? Yeah, see for yourself. Do you mind? I'm remodeling. This place needs a plant. Why is the gateway to hell in the critic's ass? Well, that's the funny thing about hell. You see, it can appear just about anywhere. The grocery store, the laundromat, and most political fundraisers. But I always thought hell was more a state of being. The absence, nay, rejection of God, leading to a world devoid of happiness, compassion, or love. Nope, it's a place in your ass. Haven't you ever seen Event Horizon? Oh, you mean that piece of... Wait a minute, isn't that the movie with the cult following where even the cult following doesn't know why there's a cult following? Oh, yes, and according to the director of Mortal Kombat, Hell can even exist in space. Really? Yes, my friend. That sounds like really lazy design work. I'm putting in a plant! The Horizon was one of those films that got a lot of advertising when it came out, but was a critical and box office failure, leading to it disappearing real quickly. But over the years, it's grown a bizarre fan base. Of who, you may ask? Um... Remember those jocks who wanted to think they were into hardcore scary movies for a couple seconds? Hey, uh, you remember that movie that was like Star Wars, but kind of scary? Event Horizon? Yeah, yeah, that was a thing. Okay, I can't say that's all of them, but it's usually the ones that I've come across. Nevertheless, it's still hard to figure out why this has gotten the attention it has over the years, but maybe this Nostalgia Ween, we can figure it out. So let's see why Hell has such a fucking weird realtor! This is Event Horizon. So after hearing music by that nightclub you pass by and go, nah, we get some background on our futuristic setting. Oh, so we colonized the moon this year, huh? Why am I always the last to know these things? Christ, this is always what happens when I ride my hoverboard too much. And seeing how this is from the director of Mortal Kombat, I expect to see some pretty bad CGI coming up here. Oh, yeah. Mmm, taste that mediocrity. Oh, that's making Sharkboy and Lava Girl look like Lord of the Rings right now. Hold on, I got some even more great effects that I can find in here. We get a pretty cool looking image, which it turns out is just the dream of our main character, Sam Neill. And naturally, what you just saw plays no part in anything whatsoever. Christ, I really hate these dream sequences in movies that don't tie into anything. They're the equivalent of that girlfriend who tells you all her dreams without relating it to the situation. Oh my god, I had such a weird dream last night that things were floating and this guy was floating and I was floating too. <sighs> uh, weird. Oh my god, you should put that in your movie! No. Come on! No. Lynch's wife says that he puts her dreams in his movies. All right, fine. It'll get you off my back. Oh my god, I had a dream you would say that. We then see Neil on a space station where the cinematography takes the flushing toilet approach as he intercepts a ship known as the Lewis and Clark. Yeah, they were gonna call it the second Juwea, but even in the future, nobody cares about Native Americans. The captain of the ship is played by Lawrence Fishburne, which, judging by his acting, makes me wonder more and more if this was just a really bad prequel to The Matrix. We were taken off a well-deserved leave and sent into Neptune space. We are now three billion clicks from the nearest outpost. What if I told you you were starring in shit? 
Now, of course it couldn't rip off the Matrix because it wasn't around yet, but you know what had been around for a while at this time? Alien. And tell me if you see anything, fucking anything that has the tiniest bit of an alien feel or look. Actually, let me make this easier. Tell me if there's anything that does not have an obvious alien feel or look. Even the truckers in space thing. In Alien, it worked because that's what they were. They were coming home from a mining job and then suddenly they were woken up to check out a disturbance. Here, these people were specifically hired to locate an abandoned ship, and yet they act like they have no idea about anything space related. Use a rotating magnetic field to focus a narrow beam of gravitons. These in turn fold space time. Layman's terms. Fuck layman's terms. Do you speak English? No, sorry. Allow me to explain using porn. A piece of paper represents space time. It folds space so that point A and point B coexist in the same space and time. Hmm, tell me more about this space thing. See, you can't actually do that. The law of relativity prohibits faster than light travel. Yeah, come on, buddy. We're mere astronauts. It's not like we're smart or anything. I built it. It creates a dimensional gateway that allows it to jump instantaneously from one point of the universe to another light years away. How? Well, it's, it's difficult to... it's all math. Yeah, what do you think we are, rocket scientists? Oh, wait, we are. We should probably know all of this. In fact, there's technically very few scientists on the voyage at all. Wouldn't it have made more sense to send more of them in? Or anyone who knows what they're fucking supposed to do? Skipper, I got a question. Sir. What the fuck are we doing way out of here? Oh, perhaps the good doctor will be kind enough to tell us. We wanted to keep it a surprise. Now, I know you're all qualified to handle top secret information, but I saw one of you take a selfie with Sophie's birthday cake and, well, the entire surprise party was just ruined. This calls for another completely pointless scare. I'm waiting. I almost wanted to convince you that was a real scream, but then halfway through I was like, fuck it, it's Event Horizon. You're all right. Christ, how many fake out dreams can a guy have? Oh, what a horrible dream. Well, at least I'm awake now. Uh. Stick it with reality! Come on, Cheshire Cat! When they finally get to the event horizon, Fishburne navigates them in with his incredibly silly hanging chair. Three, 10,000 meters of closing, sir! He looks like a rocking old lady. Why does he have that? Where is it? The scope is lit! The other people have a ton more buttons to push. Why does he get the jungle gym furniture? Wee! I'm a spaceman! After connecting safely to this incredibly immature music I'm now putting over it. They send in a probe to scope out the area to make sure it's safe for them to- Oh, are they just going themselves? Place is a deep freeze. Oh, yeah, deep freeze, huh? Is that why we can still hear the water moving as it floats by? Maybe they mistook it for a room temperature freeze. So, yeah, seeing how Neil is the designer of this ship, you have to wonder what the scientific relevance is of why the fuck it looks like Bowser's castle. No, no, the doors need teeth, that's very important. I know a reflective tunnel seems pointless, but it's scientific, I swear. Don't ask me why everything looks like Marilyn Manson's auto repair. It's space stuff, super technologically advanced space stuff. Do I have to explain with another pinup poster? <laughs> Why does nobody scream right in this movie? That sounded more like a dog barking than a woman shouting. <laughs> but the dimensional black portal hole thingy starts acting funny as one of them takes a closer look. No, don't touch it! You'll be wearing emo haircuts and doing tap dancing in bars for weeks! Oh shit! <laughs> He gets sucked in, but they pull him back only to discover things aren't making much sense. I mean, more than usual. It was liquid, and the whole cord turns out. It would mean the gateway was open. What did I say? That's it. That's the gateway was open. That's the gateway couldn't be open. Mr. Cooper's delusional. What? He would have to believe him. There's no way he could make that up. Hello? What happened here, Doctor? After seeing a typical Arby's eater, the rest of the crew is realizing they start to see things that shouldn't logically be there. Mommy? Peters! <laughs> <laughs> 
seriously, did the cast take screaming lessons from Marmaduke? Pieces! <laughs> Billy, <laughs> be with me. Forever. <laughs> you know, I just realized ghosts aren't very scary when they have a little bit of attitude on them. Forever. And I don't mean forever like when you promised to rub my feet forever. I mean forever! Of course, as scientific astronauts, they come to one logical conclusion. What are you telling me, that this ship is alive? You wanted an answer, and it's the only one I've got. Wow, that was like your first answer. I mean, Star Trek had like five episodes where they hallucinated stuff and they always had a logical conclusion for it. But you, you're like, boom, ship's alive, we gotta sacrifice a virgin. I'm looking at you, Eddie Romain Franco. Speaking of which, he wakes up from his sleep and wanders in a daze towards the airlock to kill himself. But to be fair, that might be because everybody on the crew apparently insists on calling him Baby Bear. No, oh, Baby Bear, come on. Okay, Baby Bear. Is that really gonna put him in a better mood calling him that? Come on back, Baby Bear. I told you I hate it when you call me Baby Bear. All right, we'll call you Smoochie Kids. Mm. Buttercup? Mm. Honey Lemon? Mm. I know! Shrinky Balls! You loved it when we called you Shrinky Balls! It's unavoidable. So our junior externaut wakes up from his daze and realizes what's going on. Where am I? Hey, open the door. I can't! The inner door won't open when the outside door's been triggered. Oh my god. Mama bear, open the door. Jesus! Mama bear? Baby bear? How long until they all move into a house tree in the middle of bear country? Justin just activated the door. It's on a 30 second delay. Justin! My baby bear won't leave his pedal bear anytime soon! He won't be pretty, but he should live. As you'd imagine, a lot of hostility starts to spread through the group. Justin said something about a dark inside me. What's that mean? Doctor? I, uh, I don't think it means anything. I'm walking away now. Do not chase me. Hey, I really said that thinking you wouldn't follow me. I'd like some answers, Doctor. But even Fishburne starts to get freaked out at what he's witnessing. And now it's time for what generic horror cliche will Fishburne say? Uh, let's see, I'm looking for a mother of God. Mother of God or Lord have mercy? Uh, Lord have mercy or we're doomed? Yes, I'm gonna say we're doomed. Let's see, we're doomed, we're doomed, we're, we're doomed, we're doomed, stop! God help us. Oh, God help us, man. With such memorable lines like these, who needs effort? They finally find a video of what happened to the last crew, which leads to the Scoopy and Shaggy method of confronting the unknown. We're leaving. Sorry! <laughs> My ship, you can't just leave her. I will launch attack missiles at the event horizon until I'm satisfied she's vaporized. Fuck this ship. Again, I refer all rationale of scientific discovery and exploring what the world has never encountered to fuck this ship. You can't leave. She won't let you. But Neil, quite bizarrely out of nowhere, suddenly decides he's the bad guy. You just get your gear and get back on the Lewis and Clark Doctor or you'll find yourself walking home. I am home. I'm quite uncharacteristically deciding I belong here. Anakin Skywalker's turnaround has nothing on me. From here, tons of things go wrong. Neil sabotages everyone, he blows astronauts into space, he pulls people on strings. It all goes to hell. And yes, I guess you can take that literally. But one astronaut seems just mildly annoyed that he's stranded out in the middle of oblivion. Where the fuck am I going? Why is this shit gonna happen to me? Man, I have plans tonight. I was gonna marathon Bob's Burgers on Netflix. <sighs> but it's okay, because he has a rocket pack in order to get him back. I gotta blow my air tank. I'll blow my air tank. Yes! Yes! Here I come, motherfuckers! You know, can we just have a sign that reminds us that this is supposed to be a scary movie? Good, because it was starting to look like an episode of Homeboys in Outer Space. And yes, that was a thing. Don't Google it. To make things worse, Sam Neill has pretty much transformed himself into a video game villain, having clawed out his eyes and revealed that this plot has pretty much gone the same direction as Doom. I created the event horizon to reach the stars. She tore a hole in our universe at mention of pure evil. Yeah, it's pretty hard to take him seriously when he looks like that.
he's kind of like that haunted house attraction you walk by and say, Oh, gee, I know you're trying. Just keep, keep hanging in there. You'll, you'll scare somebody. As one of the astronauts proves herself totally useless, Rocket Man lands on the window and Neil shoots at him because, like everyone in this movie, he tends to forget exactly what space does. They then come across a ridiculous blood scene that makes the shining look downright subtle. How about a nice Hawaiian death? Things get even worse when literal ghosts from the past show up. You let me burn! <laughs> just flash it, just flash it. Christ, I've seen Simpsons Halloween specials more scary than this. Oh, come on, I have that punch sound effect! But Neil somehow turns himself into Paper Cut Head and reveals that the ship has, in fact, opened up the gates of hell. Oops. Did you really think you could destroy this ship? She's been to a place you couldn't possibly imagine. I know. To hell. Wow, this sheds much more light on that passage describing hell in the Bible. I always knew that you'd left that part in. As images of his friends suffering in hell play over their incredibly disinterested acting. No, you're not in court. I watched him die. And you are all coming with me. Yeah, yeah, tell me about hell in a minute. I'm checking my Instagram. They have the only thing that could possibly make talks of eternal damnation even scarier. A fist fight. Two, one, three, five, two. We can make it even scarier if we add the Star Trek music. So Hell was surprisingly easy to beat, as Fishburne stays behind with a black hole that apparently fixes itself and the galaxy has a little poop. Our surviving astronauts think they've made it out okay, but did they? Ah! Ah! The rescue team, we're safe. Okay, okay, I need it now! We're safe. I honestly don't know. Is that how the movie ends? I guess so. You know, there's a difference between leaving a movie open-ended and just throwing in an evil shrug. Uh, you could be like, uh, so movie, uh, what did you mean by that ending exactly? I mean, are they still in hell or did they get out? Because either way, there's a lot of plot holes that don't add up. You just didn't know how to end this, so you rated M. Night Shyamalan's throwaway twist, didn't you? Yeah, okay, let's wrap this up. I'm not entirely sure why this film has a following, because honestly, it's a little too boring to even warrant one. Everything is just paint by numbers in terms of phoned in space horror. However, I don't always hear people talk about the version that we did get, but rather the version that we didn't get. Apparently this movie was really edited down, and there's a rough cut somewhere that's a lot more gory. Sadly though, the studio said it was too disturbing and cut it out, leaving us with just a lame, generic-ass ghost flick. Had they kept these cuts in, it might have made the movie stand out more. It helped make it a lot more unique. It'd be kinda like taking the gore out of the Evil Dead movies as just a big part of the identity. Maybe putting it back in might have solved a lot. But yeah, how ironic is that that a guy who directed a PG-13 Mortal Kombat had to be censored for gore in an R-rated movie? I guess this dude will never get his gore exploitation masterpiece. So, maybe it's not the film itself, but the film it could have been that fascinates people. I'm not gonna act like I have the answer why, but at least if you find the flick as dull as I do, there's at least a more interesting making of story that can go along with it. I guess one of those is liable to get your attention, but for me, I'd much rather watch what this creepy-ass imagery was going to be than the snooze fest it became. And speaking of hell, are you thinking of relocating anytime soon? Well, the smell is pretty bad even for me, but I just can't go without leaving you with some form of suffering. You put hell up my ass! How much more suffering can you get than that?! Well, I have been scouting under William Shatner's toupee. Alright, I'll head out then. Thank God. I mean, you, whatever. Hey, Tamara, can you look up my ass to see if Hella's still there? I'm gonna go be a backup singer for Rental Floss. Just do it! 
There's nothing in there but a book. Woohoo! By Stephen King. Oh! Peters! Hey everybody, doing the charity shout out this week, and this is one that I have actually worked with, I've actually volunteered for before, uh, so I can tell you in person, it is a wonderful charity, and it's just a great idea too. It's called Feed My Starving Children, and it does exactly what the title says. It helps feed starving children all over the world, and the wonderful thing about it is that there's two things you can do. You can do the traditional route, which is of course donating money to help them continue their goal and feed children all around the world, or you yourself can actually volunteer and help them pack the food and send them out. This is something where the more people they have, the faster it goes, and it is so disgustingly easy. A kid could do it. Heck, kids have done it. And it's something where just an hour of your time can feed tons and tons of kids. The more people that show up and do it, the faster and the better it goes, and the more kids it feeds. And that is the most gratifying thing in the world, just knowing that a couple seconds just dishing a spoonful of food into a bag can help save somebody's life it can feed a child and no child really nobody should have to go to bed hungry and no one should have to go through this so this is a wonderful organization and they're just phenomenal people and they do a wonderful job and it's definitely worth checking out so please please definitely either contribute some money any amount will help or if you don't have the money just go volunteer some of your time because it takes so little time so little effort but it makes such a big huge difference so please definitely go find out some more information and see if this is something you'd be interested in